today we're going to talk about the basic types of business ownership. When, if you, when you talk about your dream business or you want to start your own business, there are different ways that you can make that business happen. And the three basic types of business ownership are proprietorship, partnership, or corporation. A proprietorship is a business that one person owns. They're usually very small businesses like mom and pop organizations that are maybe one location, maybe two or three, um, or maybe out of somebody's home. So they're really small. They usually don't have more than 30 employees, um, maybe a little bit more employees than that, but they're small. But, but almost three-fourths of all businesses in the U.S. fall under this category. Usually, if somebody has a business idea, this is the way that they'll start. They'll start just uh, out on their own in a sole proprietorship, but that's not always the case. There's advantages to all the kinds of businesses, but when we're talking about the sole proprietorship, the advantages that we want to keep in mind is that the owner gets all the profit. Um, and here you can see it says the single owner or married couple. And that's because legally, you know, when you get married, unless you say otherwise in some kind of legal arrangement, when you get married, everything you own, your spouse also owns. Um, and so you can form a sole proprietorship as a married couple. Um, or it can just be on your own as a sole proprietorship. And then you get all the profit and you get to make all the decisions. Anything you want to do with the business, you don't have to agree with anybody else. They can just, you can just decide the way you want to do it. The disadvantages is that you take all the risk of starting a new business. Um, you have to provide all the capital in this kind of business situation. And in, and in this sense, we do mean money when we say capital. Capital can mean the money to start and grow a business, this, um, which is different than our capital resources that we talked about before. Um, so you provide all the money to start and grow your business. You work long hours. Um, people who own their own businesses usually say that they, um, when people own their own business, they never have a day off. They're always thinking about their business. You know, they're thinking about can they employ, you know, pay their employees? Is there, an, you know, an idea that they want to try? So you're kind of always on the clock when you own your own business. Um, and also a disadvantage is that if the business fails, you lose all the money you put into it. So if you invest in a new oven or you buy all the ingredients for your cupcakes and your business goes out of business, you lose your money. You can try and sell off some of the stuff that you've bought, which a lot of people do, but any, any loss just comes out of your pocket, any money lost. Another way you can organize your business is a, oh, sorry, a partnership. Um, and a partnership is a business owned by two or more people. So it doesn't have to just be two people. You can have a partnership with 10 people or even more. Um, a lot of times you'll see this in um, law firms, that it's a ton of people who are partners in the law firm, and that's a, pr a partnership. Um, I think Ernst & Young, that's an accounting firm, and I, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but they have a whole lot of people who are partners in Ernst & Young. So it just has to do with how you set up the business, not necessarily the number of people who own it, um, but it can be as small as two, and, and, um, but it can be more than two as well. Partnerships are usually larger than proprietorships, but they're still a relatively small business. You can find some exceptions to that. There are some kind of really well-known companies or relatively large companies that are set up like partnerships, but they're still relatively small businesses. An advantage to a partnership is that you can pool or put together all your capital to start the business. So instead of it all coming out of your own pocket, you now have all the partners' resources to start the business. Um, and then you can also combine needed skills. 
so if you, let's say, you know, wanted to start a cupcake business, you might look for partners that maybe one person who's really good at baking and they have just delicious cupcakes. You might want to find another partner that has great business skills and they have a good business plan and, um, and good ideas on advertising the business. Um, and maybe you'd even want, you know, a different person who, um, who would go out and do sales, like they were super good at selling things. So you can decide that, you know, combine those, those skills together to make a successful business. You also share the workload, so you divide up the tasks instead of it all falling on your shoulders. Um, you share the profits, you don't get all the money in this situation, you share them with the other partners, but you also share the risks. So if the business goes out of business, you share the share the costs that have been lost. The disadvantage of a partnership is that if the business fails, each partner is responsible for all the debt. So you're not paying more than you would need to, but if let's say there are three of you in a partnership together and two people just don't have any money to pay it, the people who are owed that money are going to come after whoever they can to get their money back and each partner is legally responsible for the debt if that situation happens. It's also really complicated to get out of a partnership if you disagree with your partners. Um, any of these businesses are actually legally binding. You fill out paperwork and you um, file your taxes in a certain way because of how you've organized your business. And um, a partnership is legally binding and it's hard to get out of if you disagree. You can't just quit. You have to actually um, fill out more paperwork and stuff. And if one partner dies, which hopefully wouldn't happen, but you always have to think of all the situations. But if one partner dies, um, an entire new partnership must be legally formed. So if there are three of you in a partnership and, you know, somebody passes away, you and the other partner would have to do all the legal paperwork to set up the partnership with just the two of you even. Or if you wanted to bring in a different third person, you have to fill out different paperwork. A corporation is our third type of business, and a corporation is a large business that has many owners. Legally, it acts as a single person, regardless of the number of owners, um, and that has to do with a Supreme Court ruling called Citizens United about um, how much money businesses can donate to uh, political campaigns. But it is something to keep in mind that when you incorporate as a business and become a corporation, you're legally cons considered one person. That won't be on your test. Just interesting to know. <laughs> so the advantage of a corporation is that corporations have the ability to raise large amounts of money to start the business or to grow the business by selling stock. So remember, that anytime you buy stock, you're buying a little portion of a business. So um, if, a, if maybe you have a sole proprietorship and you want to grow, you might consider incorporating and making your business a corporation because then you can sell off little pieces of your business but, and get a lot of money to maybe open a new location of your business or hire more people or advertise more, but to um, you have a lot more resources that way. All the owners, all the stockholders, share in the profits in a corporation. Um, it's a lot of people buy stock as an investment, and they are technically owners in the corporation, and they they get money from the profits. Another advantage to a corporation is its limited liability, and that means that you can only lose the money you invested in stock, nothing more. Um, so if I buy stock in Microsoft or something, let's say, I don't know, I think it's pretty expensive, like $200 a share, and Microsoft goes out of business for some reason, I just won't get that money back. I've just lost that $200. But they can't go after anything more. Whereas in a sole proprietorship or in a partnership, they can go after your house, they can go after your car, they can go after your kids' college funds, but if if you owe money to people and they're trying to collect that debt, 
um, they can go after any of your assets. And all those things you owned that I just listed, houses, cars, those are assets. Um, and that's why it's so risky. There are ways to protect yourself legally, but we're just looking at the basics here. Um, so um, things to keep in mind. The disadvantage of a corporation is that there's so many owners that each individual owner has little say in the decision making. And in some cases, it's like you don't have any say. So for somebody like me, where I'm not a large stockholder in any one corporation, I mean, I don't, it doesn't feel like I'm the owner of any of them. I do own stock, but I don't have any say at all in the business because I own such a small portion by the amount of stock I own. So, like I said, it doesn't feel like I'm a business owner. It just feels like part of my retirement plan or <laughs> whatever. So, as we talked about yesterday, an entrepreneur is a person who takes the risk to produce goods and services in search of profit. So in your assignment, my dream business, you guys are thinking like entrepreneurs. You're thinking about what kind of business you would like to create to produce goods and services in search of, of profit. But you have to take the risk. It's not just having the idea. But these people or these entrepreneurs may start a business using any of the three organization structures we just reviewed. You can start a sole proprietorship, you can start a partnership, or you can start a corporation. If you have an idea for a business, you can, you can organize it any way you want to. So now, for your dream business, that, um, for your dream business, which type of business will you form? And explain your choice. Don't just say the answer. Say why you think that either a sole proprietorship, a partnership, or a corporation would be the best choice for your dream business. Go.